still there. God is still in control. Yes. Amen. He has promised never to leave us. He has promised never to forsake us, to, but to be with us until the end. His promises are true regardless of how I feel. Regardless of how you feel, God is with you and He's wanting better for you this morning. I know that many of our valley experiences are the results of our own doing. Most of the time when I'm in a valley, you know who's caused that valley? When you're in a valley, you know who's caused your valley? Amen. You. You really don't cause my valleys. I cause my valleys. Too many times I have played Humpty Dumpty. Sitting, in, sitting there on the wall. A lot of times I've tried to walk the fence. I've tried to straddle the fence between heaven and hell, between God and, and the devil. But just like old Humpty, I fell off. All the king's horses, my personal accomplishments, my education, my abilities, my reasoning, could not repair the damage to my life. And all my king's men of self-righteousness and self-determination and self, self, self could not repair the damage to my spiritual life. Amen. Before my spiritual life could ever be managed, I had to give self to him. Right. I had to get rid of self. Amen. But thank God what I could not do and what no psychologist could do, no what psychiatrists could do, know what any doctor could do, know what any, anybody that ends with an IST could do. No counselor, nobody, God could do. Amen. Nobody else could give me that peace, that joy, that comfort, that ability that when I take my last breath that I would go to heaven instead of hell. He's the only one Amen. Amen. I, I imagine when Humpty Dumpty fell off that wall, you know, I, I love eggs. I love fried eggs. I love them easy over. I, I like scrambled eggs every now and then. And I look at Humpty Dumpty when he fell off that wall as a scrambled egg. I've been a scrambled egg many times in my life. My shell, my outer being has been crushed. My inner turmoil, strife, things going on inside that you couldn't see on the outside. It was, it was jumbled up. It's been a scrambled egg. God is the only one that can repair it. Yes. And put it all back together again. And make it even better than it was before. Amen. When His love overshadowed me and I gave my life to Him. His love is powerful enough to go to that cross and die for me in my ignorance and in my frustration and in my sin so that I could be forgiven and my sins washed away by His precious blood. Amen. Yes. Let's go back on the mountaintop for just a minute. I'm going to wind this up. Back on the mountaintop for just a second. God is there as I bask in His presence and His glory and enjoy the best things of life and experience the earnest expectation of that inheritance that He has promised me is going to come to me one day. Okay, let's fall off and go down to the valley. In the valley, He's there also to help me and my faith to grow, to mold me into a useful vessel, and to help me mature into a stronger soldier of the cross. In that valley, Satan screams into my ear. See if he does this to you. What in the world have you done? You claim to be a Christian and you've just done what? You'll never be good enough. You'll never be able to live a Christian life. Anybody? I thought you were a Christian. 
And look what you've just done. Familiar? Don't even think about becoming a Christian because you can't live a Christian life. Familiar? God won't have any use for you now. Look, look at your past. Look what you've done. God can't <coughs> use you now. You've gone too far and there is nothing, there is no turning back. That's when the odds are against you. That's when God's banner of love goes against the odds. And he says, even though I know you're small, you're one in number, you can be victorious. You are the apple of my eye. I want you. I want you to go to heaven. I died for you on the cross. You're mine. All you have to do is just come and say, here I am. And you'll wrap your arms around me. Oh, what a feeling. Mm -hmm. You talk about a mountain talk experience. Wow. When the odds are against you, when you think there's nothing left, when you think you went your last mile, you're hanging on to that rope and it's about to slip out of your hands. That's when God loves to take over. Amen. He's done it all through the Bible for thousands of years and thousands of people. 232 young men, young Israelites, 100,000 in one day. Scared the other ones off, and then God just took care of them. He didn't, he didn't, they didn't, 232, he didn't even have to chase after them. God took care of them. God will take care of everything around you, in you, on you, around you. He'll clean you up and make you exactly what He wants you to be. Amen. He wants to cover your soul with His wings of mercy. <coughs> For his eye, the Bible says, is ever, is ever watching you. And again, now you might thought this was just some cute saying, but this is in the Bible. You are the apple of his eye. Thank God. And if you have any old rotten spots, he'd take care of them. Amen. We've all had them. Some, some of us still got some. He'll take care of them. That's when my God steps up. It's like a showdown at the OK Corral with the physical world and the spiritual world. Satan's big guns are no match. And they're aimed in my direction and God is in control. His shells that he shoots at me, these shells of accusation, these fiery darts that he throws at me every single day, coming fast and furious, it's an all-out battle for Jeff can't feel the soul every single day of my life that the devil wants me to fail. But I picked the winning side. Amen. Yes. I, I, I read this Bible and found out when I got to Revelation 22 21 that, that I've won. My life's not over yet, but I found out that I'm on the winning side. I picked the winning side. If you haven't picked God yet, you're on the losing side. Yeah. I'm a winner. Don't feel like it sometimes. I might get down a few points. Then God throws up a big three-pointer. Puts me back in the game. <coughs> I watched a couple ball games yesterday. Well, couldn't do nothing else. I watched a couple ball games. And they, they was raining in three-pointers. One team was down 12 points. And within a matter of a minute... I tell you what, they came back up and they was ahead two or three points. It's like they're firing in big three pointers. God does that with me in my life. When I feel like I'm down and I'm out, He starts raining three pointers on, on old Satan and on the devil. And He puts me back in the lead. He puts me back on the mountaintop where I can feel His presence. It's an all out battle for each one of our souls with eternity hanging in the balance. That's when my God takes over.
my soul and covers me with his wings of mercy and he loves me and he takes care of me. God steps out on the street. Anybody know what they used to call that? Slap leather. I can see him out there facing off with Satan. Because they've done, they've done that before. They, they faced off. You know who won? God. God won then. When God swears off with Satan every day for me, you know what? I think when God slaps leather in, he puts me right out there again. He knocks Satan right down and, and out. And there I am, back in the lead again. Not even having to fight the battle myself because the battle was his and it's not mine. He fights the battle for me. Satan has to flee when I resist him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Has to. <laughs> when I call out Jesus' name, those two can't abide together. So when I'm living for Jesus, the devil can't live with me. Amen. So if I'm living with God, if I'm living with Jesus, the devil has to flee. Wow. Did you all get that? Christ has the power to, to, to slash the forces of Satan and send those demons fleeing back to their home in hell. Amen. I was thinking of Luke Skywalker. He had that big thing. He went out there and he could just slash things. And that's what God does for me. He's got a big machete. When that big old forest and that path out in front of me is unwalkable and, and, and I can't, can't trod through it, he's out there in front of me clearing me a path. Because I am the apple of his eye. He created me. He wants me to be an overcomer. God is my foundation. God is my rock. God is my fortress. God is my strength. He's my savior. He's my refuge. He's my deliverer. And I praise him today and I give him the glory because I'm an overcomer. I'm a winner. Amen. The victory is already won. Heaven is already yours. Amen. That's good news. Now you want... Gooder news? Anybody want gooder news? You want better news? You want best news? I'm going to give you gooder news this morning. Gooder news than heaven is already yours. How do I do this? How do I get this? How do I attain it? And how do I maintain it? Gooder news coming up. The, this reality of missing a devil's hell. How can I live a life that's pleasing to God? It's there for the taking. Does it cost a penny? All He wants you to do is invite Him into your heart. I told you, verse 22. Anybody still there? Mm -hmm. Let's go back to verse 22. And it's, just, it's decision time, okay? And it's not only decision time, but it's something uh, not only for sinners, but this is something that we all must do. Not just sinners. This is something Christians has to do also. Christian and sinner alike. We have a world outside our sanctuary doors that wants to devour us and destroy us and kill us. It wants to chew us up and to spit us out. The prophet had great advice for the king and his armies. He says, go, strengthen thyself and mark and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come up against thee. Okay, I'm going to go to a different translation because I like the way it is. Where he says, go strengthen thyself. He says, be alert now. Right now, you need to be alert. You need to build up your army. In other words, you need to build up your defenses. Assess your capabilities. And see what has to be done. Because tomorrow, that old devil will be knocking on your door and he will try to break down your walls of defense and kill you. Amen. So each one of us, we need to strengthen ourselves. We need to build up our defenses. How are we going to do that? With God in our heart. With God in our heart, we can do that. We can be an overcomer. We can be victorious. We can live a life that overcomes sin and tribulation. It's good to know that the battle has already been won. I have joined forces with the winning side. 
I am a winner because I am on God's side. I get to experience God because I have accepted Jesus into my heart. I get to go to heaven and abide with Him and live with Him forever simply because I said, God, would you come into my life? Jesus, would you come into my heart? And I'm going to do my dead level best to live for you. Amen. Bam! Done. Yes. Heaven bound. That quick. Took about three seconds for me to become a Christian. Amen. Now a lifetime to prove it. I'm trying my best. Trying my best. The devil will still attack. But he hasn't a chance getting me as long as I let God rule and control my actions and my heart. You can do the same. It's time to give your heart to God. It's time to build up your defenses. It's time to assess your capabilities. It's time to strengthen your army and change your course and your direction of utter chaos and destruction to a life of peace and calm and joy. And knowing that you are heaven back. Amen. Let's stand. Amen. Karen, would you play just as I am? One all heads bowed. One eye shut. I think that today people will make a decision whether they're going to go to heaven or they're going to go to hell. I think it's a day that we will make a decision whether we're going to strengthen our defenses and we get off of the pew and become a worker in the church instead of a wee wild wee. This morning, if God has spoken to your heart, if you would like to have this assurance of knowing that if something would happen, that you would go to heaven, this is your opportunity. It's as simple as saying, God, I want you to enter my life, enter my heart, Forgive me of my past, and I'm going to live for you in the future. That simple. Is there anyone here this morning that would like to come to this altar and say, I know in my life that I need to make this choice. I know that for my children, I know that for my family, I know that for me, I need to make a decision to start walking your way instead of my way. Someone here this morning want to make that step. God will make the rest of them with you. Someone would like to come to this altar. Say this message has touched me and I need to make a change in my life. Anyone at all? This is your time. God is calling you. Just as you are, He will accept you. He will forgive. He will forget anything and everything that you've done. You will start off with a clean slate from this day forward. Anyone at all? I can. Someone by an uplifted hand. I want to say, you know, I know I need to make some changes. I know I need to start doing some things different. And I'm raising my hand to God. To let him know that I'm serious. And I want the church to pray for me. Heads bowed and eyes are shut. Nobody will see but me and God. And I won't, uh, I won't bother you with it. Someone want to raise their hand and say, I, I need this in my life. Anyone at all? Anyone at all? Oh, Lamb of God, I come. Someone want to raise their hand. Let God know that you're serious about your future.
14 was the day that I surrendered my will to God's will. Someone want to make that first step? Anyone at all? It was a great day to start your life all anew. God's, God's told me to hang on for somebody. And I'm not going to hang on to you until you release it. Someone want to make a move. One step. You'll take the rest of them with you. You've got to make that first step. Oh, Lamb of God, I come.